supposed to be talking about an empowered woman raises empowered children. I will, just like the last speaker, slightly adjust the title a bit to talk about when a woman's dream dies. If poverty were to be likened to a human being, do you think poverty would be male or female? Male. <laughs> Let's answer the questions together. Look around you. Let's look back. All of us go to the market. A corner where we're A Makoha market. A Pakuma market. Ubo Mary market. All the markets you can think of. Who are the primarily the people you see selling crawfish? Orange? All those small, small words made up of women. When you look at the totality of the cost of the words they are selling, the whole basket of orange, the whole vegetable, the whole pepper, the whole basket of tomato, most times the entire cost of her commercial food is not up to 20,000 naira, less than and that is all that she has. Let's look, talk about the big markets. Alaba International, Ladipo Market, Trade Fair Complex. Who are the people that do business in those big markets? Thank you. Let's look back at our secondary school. The girl that used to come first, second, third, fourth. Overall, they were small. Just remember in your primary school. Remember in your nursery school. Remember in your primary school. Remember also in your university. The girls that were at the top of the class. Cast your mind back again and ask yourself, where are those girls? Some of them have one kid, two kids, three kids, beautiful children. Beyond the kids, what else do they have? Go to 40 40 at night. Most of the people you see there in the middle of the night are young girls. Most of them, what they go from money is 500 naira to 2000 naira, still less than $5 for an entire day. Think about your sister your cousins. You attended the beautiful traditional weddings, probably show so that she be. Look back at those beautiful sisters that look so glamorous on their wedding day. Where are they now? Also cast your mind back to your village. Your aunts, your grandmother. How many of them left assets for their children? Properties at Ikenebu, Douglas, at Shaka, at Amakokia. How many children left behind assets for their children? The whole is silent. How many of you inherited assets from your mother? The whole is silent. There is a, a research firm called Statisex. They released data on women's ownership, sole ownership of land and housing in the whole country, out of 200 million people. They were testing women's capacity to own a property in their own name, not their husband's name, their own personal name. This is what they come, came up with. Southeast topped the list, but with 4.9%. North Central, 4.6%. South South, 3.8%. Not east, 1.6%, southwest, 1.4%, and the northwest, 1.2%. That's all women, 1.2% of women in the entire northeast, eastern region of the country. Do you know what happened to all of these women we talked about? Whether the women in the market, your sisters, your cousins, the girls that came first, their dreams 
died. When they were young, they had beautiful dreams. I want to be a doctor, I want to own a hospital, I want to work at the UN, I'm going to be the commissioner, I'll be governor. They all had beautiful dreams. Most of these dreams were aborted before they could mature. I made a post on Facebook the week Gozo Kojiwa was the chances broadened for her to become the World Trade Organization Director General. And as I was praising her, a lot of people, a lot of young men came and they were ooing and I, oh, what a wonderful woman. I asked a question the following day. Do you know what it takes to raise a Gozo do you know what it takes to be the husband of an Ndazoko Jewa? The questions fit so many consciences. But somebody said something. A young man, he said, Victoria, there are few women with the kind of strength and capabilities that Ndazoko Jewa had because many women are behind because they cannot they do not share the same strength. I found three major factors. The society is an enabler. The church and marriage. As beautiful as these things are, they, are, they have helped to kill the dreams of many women. Let me talk about the society. How does it kill women's dreams? You may have had this experience. I had it a lot. When you try to get into public transportation and you want to sit on the window side, they will tell you you're a woman. Go inside. It happened to me the first time I was a student at UNIO. I was the first to get to the park. I took a comfortable seat by the window, and a man came from nowhere and forced and ordered me to go inside. When I refused, the whole passengers joined supported a young man that came for five minutes after me and asked me to move inside. The church, Oprah Winfrey has been together with her partner for over 30 years. She's one of the world's richest women. In, uh, if she were to be in Nigeria, she can't receive Holy Communion because she's not wedded in the church. For you to be the head of the women organization, you must be married in the church. For you to qualify to be an Ezinne, you know the Ezinne title, our mothers love that title. You must be married in the church. The church is sending a subtle message. All that you need to be powerful, to be validated, is a marriage certificate. When you hear those lines, Don't let her 
take that job that pays one million when you are earning forty thousand. She will become too much for you to control. Every time you have heeded that type of advice, you have helped to kill dreams. All these trends we discuss, most of us have experienced it. They have ultimate, one ultimate goal. To make sure the woman does not shine. To limit the woman's potential. To limit the woman's achievement. And so many women's dreams they have successfully killed. All around us we have all known examples. But what happens when a woman's dream does not die. You have heard, I, I mentioned Nangazi Okonjiwa. She has four children. All four of them went to Harvard. All four of them are accomplished and successful. Hillary Clinton has only one daughter. That one daughter went to Stanford, went to Columbia, went to Oxford. Just that one daughter. Today she sits atop many boards of many international organizations. She's extremely successful. There are so many other women. You have heard of Mo Abudu, Florisha Lakija, Bola Shagaya. So many powerful women. Take your phone, Google. Where are their children? They are all accomplished. I didn't say some of them, I said all became powerful. What is consistent about successful women is that once a woman is empowered, she must raise empowered children. Africa is poor because women are poor. Africa will remain behind as long as their women remain behind. Get the best governor, get that in Mbakwe, that is in Mbakwe, and put women behind. Africa will not. Put it anywhere. One thing I would love to say is that if you want future prosperity for your children, make sure the woman that gives birth to them is empowered. Financially, asset-wise, liquidity-wise, everything, she is stand strong and fair. What that empowerment gives to a woman is assurance. When your mother is apart, your future is assured. But when a woman's dream dies, there are two options left for her children. One is luck. The other is struggle. For luck, if luck works for all of us, there will be many big gates around them. There will be many Mark Zuckerberg. There will be many Jack Dawson's. But because luck does not work uniformly, it happens once in a while. You can't plan your future on the basis of luck. The other option is struggle. Inefficient government, insensitive leaders, harsh government policies, they are all waiting for you. Struggle, and if that works for you, that's fine. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But if you want assurance, please, I make a humble appeal to every one of you. Empower that girl, that woman, that daughter, that sister, that female cousin of yours. If you want to throw the assurance card away, choice. Yes. Thank you.